gestational age describes the time elapsed between the first day of the last menstrual period and the delivery of the baby, and it is an important part of early neonatal examination. The mother's menstrual history, when obtained, remains the best measure of gestational age, but it also depends on the accurate and reliable history. Prenatal ultrasonography is another indirect method that is based on the measurement of body parts. It normally relies upon the proportion of fetal growth rates, such as crown rump length measured in the first trimester and a biparietal diameter measured in the second trimester. However, during the fetal growth, the measurement is subjected to the intrauterine environment and may become inaccurate. Furthermore, this is not widely available in many developing countries. When those mentions are unavailable, one can fully appreciate the usefulness of the scoring system, such as the new ballot maturation score. The validity of this examination extends until at least 96 hours of life. The maturation assessment is divided into two categories, the neuromuscular and the physical maturity. The assessment of the neuromuscular maturity involves posture, square window for the wrist, arm recoil, popliteal angle, scarf sign, and heel to ear. Meanwhile, the assessment of physical maturity involves skin, lanugo hair, plantar surface of the foot, the breast, eye and ear, and genitals for male or female. The video available explains the standard techniques for performing each of the 12 criteria in this course with new needs. The first assessment for the physical maturity is the skin. Maturation of fetal skin involves the development of its intrinsic structures concurrent with the gradual loss of its protective coating, the vernix gaseosa. As fetal maturation progresses, the skin becomes thickened, wrinkled and started peeling. At term and post-term, the skin started to dry, causing further peeling, cracking with leathery skin appearance. Lanugo is the fine, soft and unpigmented hair resembling peach fuzz covering the body of the fetus. Premature infants of 24 to 32 weeks gestation frequently display this fine coat of lanugo hair. The ball area starts to occur at the lumbosacral area and becoming lesser with increasing maturity. The plantar surface looks at the creases at the sole of the foot. At 28 weeks gestation, the sole appears smooth. The creases start to appear at the ball or anterior wanted of the foot and accelerate with increasing maturity. However, in a very immature infant, the heel to distance should be measured. The breast, areola and bud should be felt and measured in millimeter. At 28 weeks gestation, the breast tissue is absent and areola is barely visible. By 32 weeks gestation, the areola is stippled with a raised bud that can be measured. The eye and ear involves looking at the changes in configuration and the curving of the pinna, thickness of cartilage and the state of development of eyelids as the maturity increases. At 26 weeks gestation, the ear has less cartilage and pliable, hence folding of the pinna will cause a slow release or remain folded. However, in term baby, the ear is firmed with well-formed margin and the pinna instantly recoil. The genitals for male involves examination of the scrotal area. At 28 weeks gestation, the testicles is still high in scrotum. The left testicle precedes the right, descends and enters the scrotum during the 32 weeks. The scrotal rage can be appreciated at this stage. The scrotal skin becomes thicker and pigmented and at 36 weeks gestation, both testicles are well descended and palpable. Upon completion of the examination, the physical maturity of the ballot score then should be plotted. Next, we look at the neuromuscular maturity. The first examination is the posture. Posture reflects body muscle tone at rest. 
the maturation starts with centripetal direction and the lower extremity is ahead of upper extremity. The square window test determines the wrist flexibility and or resistance to extensor stretch. The examiner strengthens the fingers and apply pressure to the dorsum of the hand. The angle when the neonate's wrist is flexed progresses from 90 degree to 0 degree with advancing gestational age. Arm recoil maneuver looks at the passive flexor tone of the biceps muscle by measuring the recoil after brief extension of the arm. The examiner should place one hand under the neonate's elbow for support. Arm recoil measures from 180 degree to less than 90 degree. Score 4 is only given when the arm recoil and the fist touches the face. The popliteal angle is measured when the infant's thigh is flexed at the hip and placed at the abdomen. The examiner should support the thigh from the side and avoid excessive pressure on the flexor being tested. Then, the examiner holds the foot and extends the leg below the knee until a resistance is felt. The angle progresses from 180 degree to less than 90 degree with increasing gestational age. The scarf sign is performed to test the passive tone of shoulder girdle. The head should stay in the midline and the examiner took the infant's hand and placed it around the neck as far as possible while feeling for resistance of the muscle. The score is based on the point of the elbow on the chest when the resistance occur. Score minus 1 is the full scarf at the level of the neck. Score 0 is at the contralateral axillary line. Score 1 is at the contralateral nipple line. Score 2 is at the xiphoid process. Score 3 is at the ipsilateral nipple line. And score 4 is at the ipsilateral axillary line. Heel to ear test measures the resistance of the flexor muscles at the hip. Once the hip girdle is stabilized, the hip is flexed so that it rests on the sheets alongside the infant's trunk. Then, draw the leg towards the ear to see how much resistance there is to the maneuver. The point is given as follows. Score minus 1 is when the heel reaches the ear. Score 0 is when the heel reaches the nose. Score 1 is when the heel reaches the chin. Score 2 is when the heel reaches the nipple line. Score 3 is when the heel reaches the umbilicus. And score 4 is when the heel reaches the femoral crease. Upon completion of the examination, the neuromuscular maturity for the ballot score should then be plotted. We then calculate the maturational assessment. This carries a total of 35. Using the ballot score, a total of 35 carries a gestational age at 38 weeks.